This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. Hello and welcome to episode 67 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. We're doing something a little bit different today. I don't often talk about a specific destination. In fact, uh, we had one episode about my beloved Japan um, quite a while back. And today we're talking about another place that I really, truly love. And it's my home state of Western Australia. So Western Australia is a place that, to be honest, not many people get to but not because it's not amazing, just because it's really, really far away. Um, Even for us, we find ourselves kind of stuck on the edge of the earth. I live in Perth, which is the capital city of Western Australia, and there might be a couple of million of us now, but we're still very isolated. So the closest city is Adelaide um, in the the next state over in South Australia, but that's like around 2,000 kilometres away. Like it's not somewhere you can just pop over to and it's not even cheap to fly there or any other part of Australia really there's nowhere that we can go um, you know quickly and easily where you know kind of stuck here unless we make a deliberate effort to get out Um, but despite that or maybe because of it Western Australia is an incredible place so it's vast Um, I saw a statistic online that we have um, twelve and a half thousand kilometers of coastline just on our state so wherever you're living you probably have less in your state um, unless you are living in, you know, the whole country of Russia and a few others will have more coastline. But this is just our state um, and we have just endless, endless, well, amazing beaches, to be honest. It's such a beautiful place. Uh, but yeah, WA, Western Australia, is so big and empty. I also saw a stat that if WA was a country it would still be in the world's top 10 for size. So the top, one of the top 10 countries in the world, uh, because it is enormous, Um, but it's enormous and empty. Despite that, some of my guests, in fact, all of my guests today have been to Western Australia and two of them now live here. Uh, And it was really interesting to hear their various takes on what is worth seeing and what is beautiful about WA. And fortunately for me, they were all very enthusiastic about it. Uh, So I will start off by introducing our first guest, Zoe Dawes of The Quirky Traveller. So I've known Zoe for years online, but I was very, well, we were both lucky perhaps to meet last year in person because she was brought out to do a a blogging trip around some parts of WA and we got to spend some time together. And this is her reflections after the fact of what she liked about WA. It was the familiarity and the unfamiliarity that was what I think impressed me about that area because we did, um, I did the sort of Perth Fremantle then down to Margaret River and the wine region and the food area and we went out and about, um, we had a great day out sort of, you know, canoeing down a river and walking along the coast. Uh, that side of it was was kind of familiar in an unfamiliar way because obviously the, 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 there are the vineyards and everything which are, are fabulous. They are not the same, but similar to ones we have in Europe, even mm. even in southern England now, but with that Aussie twist, you know. And um, and then we we went and had a we went to a cave, a N- N- Nilgi cave. Yeah, Nilgi cave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And had a wonderful experience there with a, 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 an Aboriginal guy there who who played the didgeridoo inside the cave, mm. which was just mind blowing. Magical. Um, it was, but I think probably for me, Rottnest Island, Rado, <laughs> 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 um, it kind of encapsulated something because, well, for, it, it had got everything that ticked my boxes because. It was, well, the sun was shining, Amanda, as you know, because you were there. I mean, it did pour with rain, didn't it, at first? We, yes, we had some dodgy moments, but thankfully it got better. <laughs> it got better. Um, it was beautiful, you know, that I, and that sort of pristine kind of beaches that I think of with Australia. Mm. 
it had got the quirkiest animal, you know, <laughs> the quirky quokka. <laughs> so it's got an animal that I've never seen that you could get really close to and have, you know, have a, have a sort of, well, I never managed a selfie, but then. No, me neither. But... But there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Others did. Yes. Um, had some good food, really fresh seafood. Uh, but also there was the history there. Obviously, it was an Aboriginal detention centre prison um, mm. as well. And that was you know that was interesting to see I thought the exhibition in the museum was really powerful mm. the stories from there and obviously still being able to see the buildings and that one of them is now a tiny teeny little cinema <laughs> so, <laughs> you know that it was small enough to walk around or cycle around um it had got that island feel but very Australian feel as well so to me it encapsulated everything um, I absolutely loved Perth. I thought it was a really beautiful city, um, it, it, not just because the sun finally shined properly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had the um, uh, we had a talk from um, uh, Walter about mm. the Aboriginal culture of the area, which was very interesting. Uh, but also that wonderful modern architecture, um, the beautiful parks and everything. So. A really, a really interesting place and, and actually not really what I expected. I have only been to Australia twice. So once was to Darwin, Uluru and Alice Springs, which is obviously very different. Yes. I haven't been over to the um, east side. I haven't been to Sydney or anywhere. Um, but uh, I, I haven't been yeah, to our, yeah, our big no, city. So, yeah. No, ah, interesting. no. So I have nothing to compare that with. Mm. But I like the laid back atmosphere of Perth. I, I like cities if they're laid back. I don't like stressy cities. And yeah, um, yeah. I like a bit of space and I like cities on the water. So, you know, it was friendly. It was laid back. But but yeah, I think I think um, Rottnest Island was just sort of encapsulated everything. And I would have very happily stayed there for a few days mm. and just chilled yeah know. absolutely yes ah oh, no I think you've um you've explained the way I feel about WA as well and I think you're right Rottnest does kind of have all of the good bits all in one and it's such a chilled relaxed place mm-hmm. um with yeah it's it is very typically Aussie so um yeah I love it there so I'm glad you got to experience it but you'll have to come back and spend like a week there at some stage it's the ultimate yeah. place to relax properly I was really pleased to hear how much Zoe had enjoyed Rotnest or Rotto as we call it and how much it impressed her because it really is a pretty unique and enormously beautiful place and it's not one of those places where you go and rush around and see lots of things. It's just a small island. You can cycle around it in half a day or less. Uh, It's casual, it's friendly, it's laid back and I think it really says a lot about what we aspire to be as Australians and particularly as Western Australians stuck over here at the end of the earth. So um, Rottnest is a really special place to me. Uh, I don't go as often as I would like to, but uh, it's, um, yeah, been influential in various parts of various times of my life. I've got some really special memories. Um, Odd things, for example, oh, must be getting on towards 20 years ago, I was working as a research assistant at one of the universities here and uh, my boss at the time got together a bunch of academics from around the world who were all researchers in the same field and he decided we'd all go to Rottnest Island for a week to write a book. So um, I think there was probably, if I remember rightly, maybe seven or eight academics from uh, Australia, UK and the US and we uh, rented some houses there and spent a week uh, in creative contemplation, which is, and Rottnest Island is a perfect place for it. And of course, the people who'd come from from interstate and abroad just loved it. And that was a, yeah, a really unique way to spend some time there. I've been there on school camps. I've been there with friends. I've been there with my son. And it's just, every trip is different and every trip is thoroughly enjoyable. So, ah, it's such a beautiful place. (laughs) I'll leave a link in the show notes to one of the posts I've written about Rottnest so you can get a feel for it um, visually as well. Now, my next guest today is Joe Castro of Lifestyle 50. Uh, Now, Joe's a lovely uh, bloggy friend of mine um, and we met, I think, wouldn't be too long after she moved to Western Australia. She has lived in many places around the world. Um, We had a long chat recently and she will pop up in some more episodes in the future, I am sure. Uh, because she has so many interesting tales to tell. 
but um, she and her husband have moved around a lot, lived in all kinds of different places. So the fact that she really likes Western Australia with all her different experiences, well, it really says something. When did you first arrive in Western Australia? How long have you lived here now? Um, we arrived in Western Australia in 2009, in January 2009. 2009. So okay, so you're eight, going on nine years here. Going on nine years, and that's amazing. That's the longest we've lived in any one place ever since we were <laughs> married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet, because otherwise you wouldn't have had time to be in all these other countries. So, yes, no. that is long. Um, so, so tell me... What do you like about Western Australia? Oh, the, how, how long have we got? Um, <laughs> we, I think we, abs- we love the scenery. Well, we love the people. We really love the, the fact that it isn't crowded. And mm-hmm. I think it's made us quite um, crowd phobic having <laughs> lived, lived this side. We're very conscious of crowds now wherever we go. And it's so lovely to get back here and be on an open road where you can actually, you know, put cruise control on and just go for a couple of hours on cruise control and then duck off to see see, see some amazing places and beaches where there's only only you perhaps and Mm. um, forests where you're walking and it's only you so you better not get lost Um, you know I think that just this vast expanse of of country which isn't um, lots of people think of Western Australia and say, oh, you know, isn't it all flat and isn't it all desert? And they really have no concept of how varied it is and what um, biodiversity we've got here. And, mm, um, you know, and it's still so much, so fresh and new, a lot of it. I, I, mm. I love that. Mm. Uh, yes, exactly. Because it's so vast, then it does cover uh, you know, a range of climates and, and a range of geography and, and all kinds of, um, not a, not a big range of people. We're not, uh, we don't have many people, but, um, no, yeah, but we have everything yeah. else. So, um, yeah. where would you recommend a visitor to Western Australia? Um, what are your kind of top two or three places that you would send them to? Okay. If, what well, if they had unlimited time? Yes. Then... Let's go with unlimited time because you need a lot okay. of time to get around Western Australia, don't you? Then I'd say definitely do a trip to the Kimberley mm-hmm. and um, go and see it while it's still relatively um, untouristy because mm. I can see that that's going to change in the future. It has to. Yeah. Um, so go and experience the vast, the vast big starlit skies and the gorges and the wonderful, amazing sights um, and being able to just travel on dirt roads and camp and amazing so mm. I'd say the Kimberley mm-hmm. um I haven't uh done a, a lot on the northwest but I've been to Broome and um Coral Bay not Coral Bay um Shark Bay mm-hmm. so I we absolutely I would say definitely go to Shark Bay and the um the national park there and mm. Shell Beach and go and, and swim with dolphins and Monkey Mia mm. Yeah. Um, love that there. We'll definitely do a, um, a, a twilight cruise there and see the dugongs as well, which oh, are amazing cool. creatures. Oh, yeah, I've never been there. Don't tell anyone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Loved it. And then, of course, where we live, Bunbury, you can swim with wild dolphins. So I would say to people, don't discount Bunbury because many people... So kind of just wave as they fly past to Bustleton or Margaret River. Yeah. And Bunbury has some amazing beaches and um, there's a fantastic dolphin discovery centre. And um, so you can swim with dolphins there and go out on eco tours on boats as well. Mm-hmm. So Bunbury, um, a little a place which doesn't get too much exposure, but, it, but really is, I think, like Margaret River's baby sister, is the Ferguson Valley. And that ah. is only 15 or 20 minutes from Bunbury, the most stunning undulating scenery with valleys and rivers and trees and just paradise, especially at this time of year when everything's green and starting to bloom. And there now are quite a number of wineries and restaurants mm. and um, little galleries. And so it's becoming this a place where you can easily spend a day 
going around seeing different artisans um, and galleries and having a nice lunch and then doing a bit of wine tasting or even beer tasting. So there's a couple of craft breweries as well. Oh, so that's goodness. Off, the beat, off the beaten track, but it's only two, two and a half hours from Perth. So yeah. you can do it in a day. Wow. I might have to get you to show me around the Ferguson Valley, Joe. Yes, I'd love to. That would be great. That would be a lovely day out. Mm, we'll do I didn't that. even really know it existed, and that's terrible because I have lived in Western Australia most of my life. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. There you go. You see, Western Australia is so fast, and there's always these things that you think, "Whoa, I didn't know about that." Yes, um, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And it's always changing. It's changed a lot over the years. I mean, when I was a kid, my grandfather lived in Bunbury. And it wasn't a really exciting place to go. But these days, it's um, completely different. Completely different. Yeah, it's become really cosmopolitan. We're getting some great restaurants. Mm. And, and one or two of them will give Perth a run for their money. Mm. And, uh, yeah, we're getting uh, – there's a lot going on now at the waterfront, lots of development going along there. Mm. So, you know, we're going to have much more access to kind of the – the lifestyle of eating and drinking and looking out to sea and oh beautiful so I think that's going to be great I'm a little jealous Jo's lived here less than 10 years and she's actually seen more of Western Australia than I have so I better get cracking and see some more of it uh, as soon as I can it's tricky because of the with the vast distances uh, it's often more expensive to travel within Western Australia than it is to fly to Southeast Asia um, so it can be a, a tricky balance. What do I want to do? Um, but uh, I definitely, I've never been to the Kimberley region and I really, really want to. Um, now, my final guest today is Nina Burakowski of WA Explorer. So she has a gorgeous blog that focuses on the outdoors of WA. And I think that uh, she's right in thinking that that's a particularly unique and amazing part of Western Australia. So she gave us uh, some ideas of some of the be most beautiful parts of WA. The unique thing about WA is really it's the outdoors. Like there's so many mm -hmm. great cities in Europe and Asia and, um, you know, and we have fantastic cities in Australia too, but I really think the point of difference is, um, is the natural environment. Mm -hmm. So the top three it's a bit seasonal like wa is huge like you know yes. going to, <laughs> it really you know, is. Like, <laughs> like yeah like when i was a flight attendant like in um switzerland like you know the longest european flight we had was two hours <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like that was one from one end to the other and here yeah. you know it's not even halfway no it's hilarious isn't it when you see those maps in superimposing europe on top of Australia and yeah, Western Australia is just so vast and so empty compared to Europe. Yeah, yeah, and that's really that's the difference, isn't it? Like just that demographic nothingness. Like, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I think it's hard to imagine. Even for me, even though I've been out there in the outback, it's still hard to really imagine like how much there is of that, that there's so much emptiness. And yeah, like if you're driving through Europe, you just, yeah, you would cover multiple countries and multiple languages and cultures in that space. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, all the architecture and just the towns and mm. like the hills and mountains. And yeah. yeah, geographic features too, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've distracted you. So tell me now, you're, back to your outdoors in WA, what's the best places to go? Um. Yeah, you're kind of stretching me there. <laughs> <laughs> What's your three favourite spots? I know three is, is hard. <laughs> um, do I do I have a time limit or? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got to pick up my son in three hours. <laughs> uh, well, well, um, three places. Yeah, regardless of the time of the year, I think I think really Kimberley, the Kimberleys. Even though I haven't actually been a lot to the Kimberleys, like I just think that is really different to anywhere in the world. So something like the Gibb River Road um, is a is a unique experience. Mm. Um, Karajini, like for the gorges. Yep. And um, that's sort of 
um, outback experience. Mm-hmm. That's pretty unique. There, I've never been to the Kimberleys, yeah. unfortunately, but uh, Karajini I have explored, and it's amazing. Um, yeah, I think we need to put Margaret River in the top three, really, just for the for the for the experiences that it has there, and compared to a lot of other things, I think you get more bang for your buck around the Margaret River. You know, with the diversity and the infrastructure that's there, the wineries. The, the food and wine experience. Yeah, it's pretty amazing down there, isn't it? I hadn't been for a while and I went um, to I went to Bustleton for school holidays earlier this year and um, went to a couple of wineries down towards Margaret River as well and I'd I'd kind of um I'd kind of thought people had been just overrating it in the way it had been becoming more sort of famous and well known, but it really is a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, no, I think it is. I think sometimes um uh, yeah, we, we focus all our attention, like if we have a long weekend or, you know, a few days, like it's just Margaret River, but but it really does have a lot to offer. Um, and I think one of the places that probably doesn't get enough attention is the Wheat Belt and um, Kalgoorlie, like, you know, there's so much history there from our um, sort of gold digging days and because mining is such a huge thing in WA. Mm. Um, I think that's that is also kind of a unique experience because, like, for many Europeans, like you know, if I talk to them about mining or you know that they really have no idea what it is. So I think, mm. um, yeah, to go to Kalgoorlie and see the big pit, for example, that's a pretty impressive feature. Yeah, and that yeah, yeah, I think it is so like. Um, yeah, it's something different. Yeah, and you're right. Like, it's a really important part of of Western Australia's identity. Is you know, a lot of our wealth is built on mining. So it's um, yeah, it's an important part of our culture. Having said that, probably a lot of people in Perth don't have much experience, direct experience of those towns either. But we should. And no, I probably not. Yeah, my, my only sort of experience really came from a high school camp. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and then, and then you sort of forget about it, and you, it doesn't really register. Um, uh, yeah, if I and the other spot, I think we're over three, but yeah, Ningaloo definitely. Is, oh, yeah. is a treasure, isn't it? That's... Oh, it's amazing. I hadn't been up there till last year and, wow, I was blown away by like all the diverse things you can do up there and how little known it is considering how amazing it is. Yeah, because uh, we all tend to know about the Great Barrier Reef, mm-hmm. but, like, having um, Ninga lose is just incredible. Like, it's just so accessible. Like, you can just grab your snorkel and your fins and, you know swim off like 50 metres and you're on this just incredible reef. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, you just walk in from the beach and there you are. Yeah, incredible and so beautiful. So many amazing places to go and see in Western Australia. I think it's one of those destinations where, especially if you've got quite a bit of time to really explore, you can come away quite changed. Uh, it's one of those places where you have – probably lots of time to kind of contemplate and disappear into your thoughts, uh, stare at amazing, incredible scenery and just really get inspired by it. I know whenever I get into rural Western Australia, I uh, I do come back extraordinarily inspired. Um, Like last year, I was lucky enough to have a trip to the Ningaloo Reef and um, near Exmouth and Coral Bay. And what an amazing area of my state, which I'd never really known anything about, kind of knew the names and that was it. Uh, And just so much, so much beauty and culture and, um, you know, all sorts of just amazing and inspiring things to do. I really don't have the words for it, obviously. Um, So instead, (laughs) in the show notes, I'll link to a post I wrote about the Coral Coast and Ingaloo Reef and how that trip really stretched my comfort zone, which is always a good thing, I think. So um, I hope I have, well, me and my guests have persuaded you to put Western Australia on your must-visit list. Um, do ask if you have any questions. I like to uh, talk about my home state and I could do it non-stop for hours. So give us a yell if you're thinking of coming this way. But otherwise, that uh, ends episode 67 of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. And I'll leave some links in the show notes to find more information about our great guests. So just quickly, first up, we had Zoe Dawes of The Quirky Traveller. And you can find her at thequirkytraveller.com and Quirky Traveller on Twitter and Instagram. 
Next up, we had Joe Castro, and she blogs at Lifestyle50, which is lifestyle50.com, uh, which is a blog about inspiring women to live their best lives as they get older. Lots of great stuff there. And she also has a more focused travel blog um, with a lot of Western Australian content on it at zigazag.com. And finally, we spoke with Nina from WA Explorer, and that's another great uh, re- reference to check out if you're thinking of coming to WA. Uh, she's at westaustralianexplorer.com. As always, I'd like to encourage you to come and join our Facebook group. It's at Thoughtful Travellers on Facebook, so you can either just search for Thoughtful Travellers in the Facebook group um, or there's a link in the show notes. You can also tweet me at Amanda Kendall and use the hashtag Thoughtful Travel Pod. And as always, you can catch up with the show notes on my Not A Ballerina blog. And today they'll be at notaballerina.com slash 67. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and questions about Western Australia. This has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now.